So now on to our program. So first, we will begin with a recorded mindful awareness practice session by our clinical psychologist, Joy, who is a mindfulness trainer, followed by a handphone photography workshop session with Mr. Peter Yeo. We will then have a horticulture se sharing session with Ms. Tam Xiang Yu, and finally, a talk by Professor Kua Yi Hyo. We will then end off the webinar with a short Q&A session. Now I shall begin with the mindfulness session. As Joy is currently overseas, this will be a uh, she used to be playing a recording she has kindly provided to us. So sit back and relax. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joy, mindfulness teacher at My Science Center. Welcome to this mini AWE session. Let's start with a short mindful breathing exercise. So first of all, adopt a comfortable yet alert posture. Feeling the feet on the floor. If you are sitting on a chair, feel the feet flat on the floor. And then the seat, sit bones on the chair. And lift up your spine, but not too stiff. Shoulders dropped, chest open, and slightly tuck in your chain. You may close your eyes or Keep your gaze soft in front of you. Start by taking a few natural breaths and gently bring attention to the sensations of the breath in the body. You may choose to focus on the lower abdomen, the belly, or the chest, or the nostrils, whichever point that allow you to feel the breath most. You may feel the rising falling of the abdominal wall where you breathe in and out or the chest expanding deflating or the cool air coming in through the nostrils and going out from the nostrils as you breathe in and out. So just choose one point in the body that allow you to feel the breath, feel the sensations of the breath most vividly. Just breathe naturally. There's no need to change the breath in any way. Just allow the breath to breathe itself. Just trust the breath will breathe naturally on its own. Feel the ever-changing sensations of the breath in the body, the in-breath, the pause in between, then the out-breath. Then there's a pause in between the out-breath and next in-breath. Just follow the breath one by one, moment by moment. Mm -hmm. 
remember that we are not only bringing awareness, but with loving and gentle awareness on our breath. So be gentle with yourself. If the mind wanders off, that's perfectly normal. From time to time, the mind may be distracted by thoughts, by sounds, or other distractions. There's no need to judge. There's nothing wrong with it. Just gently acknowledge the wandering mind and bring it back gently but firmly to the chosen focus of the breath. If the mind keeps wandering off, Just notice and keep bringing it back to the breath again and again with patience, gentleness, and acceptance. If the mind wanders off, Allowing the mind to wander off for a while. Then when you feel it's easier to bring it back, just gently bring it back. Just allowing yourself to be fully present with each breath. Feel the full duration of in-breath, the full duration of out-breath. Just let it be. At some point of time, you may wish to expand awareness to include the body as a whole. Again, reconnect with the sensations of feet, the seat, or hands, and the whole body. Feel the whole body sitting here and breathing. The whole body just being here, sitting and breathing. There's nothing to do, nowhere to go. Just being here. Dwelling in this moment. This moment and this moment.
Anytime you feel ready, you may gently open your eyes, start to take in whatever is present in your surrounding. You may look around, also open the ears to hear whatever sounds that is present in the here and now and gently move your body and this practice come back to the session yeah this is the end of this short mindful breathing practice thank you everyone now we hope everyone is feeling relaxed and re-energized from that session now, I would like to take the chance to invite Mr. Peter Yeo to conduct, to conduct the second part of his hand clone photography workshop session. Peter is a former senior lecturer at Nian Polytechnic at the School of Film and Media Studies, specializing in digital photography. Peter has accumulated more than 28 years of teaching experience in creative digital arts and has received numerous excellent teaching awards, as well as excellent service awards during his academic career. Peter, the floor is yours. Okay, hi, good morning. I'm Peter Yeo. Uh, nice to meet you all again. I'm not too sure uh, you all have attended my first session, uh, handphone photography. But first of all, I thought it would be good if uh, we can have a good revision. Let's see, is it working? Yeah. All right, uh, because some of you may have forgotten, maybe. So we have a good revision of part one. And some of you may uh, also know what we have covered in the past, right, the first session. So uh, first of all, let's look at this part. We cover about a uh, handphone. Or handphone, actually, there's a built-in optical image stabilization so that uh, this chip will help you to focus your picture. But of course, all different handphones got different type of chip or different type of stabilization. Uh, that's what they, uh, makes it a bit different. So whenever possible, hold your handphone steadily, especially at a low light condition. Second shot, let's see. Mm. It's not moving. <laughs> okay. Um, second thing is because our uh, handphone is so popular this day and because it's very handy, so we can do it uh, everywhere, uh, anytime. And you can use it for selfie, and you can use it for Wi-Fi, or you can use it with one hand or both hands, or even uh, with stick, right? So even this stick these days, uh, there's a remote control and it can be used for uh, with uh, motorized as well. So it's, that's why it become very popular. Okay, the first thing that I cover last uh, sessions is whenever possible, when you are taking a picture, always pay attention to the horizon. So if uh, anytime you try to uh, straighten up your horizon or align the horizontal and vertical line. Yeah, oh, hey. that's what happened. <laughs> Let's go back again. Sorry. Okay. So next thing that I cover is avoid disproportion disproportionate shots. Right. So sometimes because the camera is very close to the person head, that's why the head become very big, and the body or the leg can be very small. So try to avoid that part. You can either lower your camera uh, angle uh, or level or move down a little bit more so you can avoid this problem. 
Next thing is we will also try to avoid these proportional shots for subject and background. The background can be too huge and the subject become too small. What you have to do is ask the subject move closer to your camera. Uh, the last part that we cover is be aware of the background. All right. The background can be very interesting, very nice setup, but unfortunately, because the plant grew up from a person's head, so it's a bit distracting. So beware of this. The background is supposed to be complement your subject, not distracting the object. That's what we call merger. So, the four things that we cover, one is to hold your handphone steadily. And every time when you're taking a shot, pay attention to the horizon. Uh, you straighten up the horizontal and vertical line. Three, avoid uh, disproportionate shots, especially the head and body and the subject and the background. Uh, last but not least, always be pay attention to your background. Make sure the background is complement your subject and not distracting or especially merger. Okay. So to start with, I would like to start with this uh, cartoon. It is very interesting. Uh, Traditionally, we think about a photographer using, using uh, this uh, big, bulky uh, DSL camera. But these days, it seems a lot of people using handphone and they can claim that I'm a photographer too. So I hope one day you can be a good photographer using a handphone. Why is that so? Okay, I'm not too sure you're aware of this. Uh, in 2019 and 2020, actually Leonard Zhao Pao and Samsung, they collaborated. And eight of these photographers from Leonard Zhao Pao, they used Samsung camera or handphone to take picture around Singapore and show it live. So it's amazing. Actually, that's, a, that's I would say, is a change of history of using handphone as a professional camera. At this point of time, maybe you are thinking about hey, what handphone I'm using. Which handphone would be good for camera work? And what's a good buy, especially? So today, I'm going to introduce uh, three top models uh, in the market. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, only these three, but these three uh, models or, or three brands that I used it before. Right? One is Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. The other one is Apple uh, iPhone 12. And if, in fact, I heard about uh, iPhone 13 is coming up soon. And last but not least is Huawei P40 Pro. These three are the top, uh, one of the top three models in the market and very good in handphone uh, for camera work. Why they are so good in camera works. I just want to illustrate a few uh, things in here. One is because this handphone got either four or five different camera lenses, right? So like for instance, they have a wide angle lens. This wide angle lens is a primary lens or is the main lens that you capture your shots. But sometimes if you come to a place that uh, is a, a wide landscape, uh, environment. So perhaps this one will give you an extra uh, lens they call ultra wide angle lens. So you're able to capture a landscape shot. And also uh, this camera got a telephoto lens. This telephoto lens is for you to capture something that uh, from far but able to get a close-up shot. So like uh, this Samsung got these two uh, zoom uh, can be a three times zoom, can be 10 times zoom. In other words, they can get very, very close to the objects. But don't, don't mistaken, this telephoto zoom, I'm saying this is called optical zoom. It's not digital zoom. Optical zoom and digital zoom is a bit different. Optical zoom, they give you a very crystal sharp 
uh, image. Dig digital zoom, they won't give you that type of shot image. Right? So sometimes the salesperson may fool you, hey, this handphone can zoom up to 50 times, can zoom up to 100 times. That is called digital zoom, not optical zoom. So you want to be, uh, pay attention to that. And of course, all the handphone got front selfie lens, right? But Samsung got a very high resolution, right? Okay. So uh, this are uh, this why these are the uh, top models. Okay. First thing that I'd like to cover is if, for instance, if my shot is slanted, what should I do? I'm sure you uh, pay attention to that. And maybe uh, in the future, you're able to do uh, with this uh, editing. So first thing I wanna teach you is how to use the built-in editing feature uh, for the handphone. First of all, you select your phone, your photo, and then you click the edit mode, right? Once you click your edit mode, you go to second step, select the rotate icon. Right? Once you select the rotate icon, you're able to see this. Right? So what you have to do is to align it. Right? Align it until the point that the horizon is straightened up. Then you click OK. So these are the few steps you need to do. So what happened is, for instance, this is the shot was taken previously, uh, was tilted. Or slanted and after edited what happened you see this effects all right become straightened up okay. the whole horizontal line is straightened up and the vertical line also straightened up okay the next tips that i want to cover is uh, most of the photographer, whether you are amateur or professional, they use this composition techniques and it's very, very useful. It is called the rule of thirds, uh, the rule of thirds. And that's cover two horizontal line and two vertical lines, right? And they are the one third above and one third below. One third on the right and one third on the left. And also notice all these four lines, these are four different cross intersection. And these four cross intersections, we will try to use, make use of one of these cross intersection as point of interest. All right, let me illustrate for that. For instance, um, I come to this place. Right. I'm not too sure uh, you yeah, have visited this place in uh, Hangzhou Ling Ying Shi. It's very popular uh, and this is a landmark uh, uh, statue. Where is the point of interest? If you look at the horizontal line and look at the vertical lines, right? And the point of interest will be the head of the Buddha. Right? That would be the point of interest. Let's continue. Uh, just now I saw the uh, video. Actually, uh, you all have been there uh, in Bonera Garden. And you see this uh, building over there. So the point of interest is actually is the building, right? Instead of placing the building right at the center, we try to use, put it one third, uh, using a one third rule, right? Can be on top of the intersections, right? Or on the left shots, using the uh, girl, right, the, the head as a point of interest. So it can be one third on the left and one third above the line. So that could be one third, uh, rule of third. And of sometimes you may capture a close up shots, right? So we will use the portrait shots and focus on the person like this uh, animal, the eye become the intersections, right? become the point of interest. I also like to introduce a few more, like some of my own uh, photo shots that are taken uh, from different places, right? This rooster, 
right? Um, and where's the point of interest? It's the head of the rooster, right? And also uh, brought students to uh, oversee. This is the was uh, taken at uh, Laos. Uh, I noticed from far away uh, this fisherman try to uh, capture fish, right? And he's trying to uh, do some uh, uh, catching by throwing the net, right? So before uh, that, I slowly get closer and frame it nicely according to rule of third, right? So I make use of the head as the uh, intersection point or point of interest. Again, uh, this one was taken at uh, Myanmar, right? Different type of fishermen, they use different uh, equipment to capture fish. And I use a, a point of interest, I want the rule. Uh, this one was a very popular uh, uh, waterfall at Laos. And from far away, I noticed that this young guy was slowly climbing up the rocks. So I quickly go in and frame it according to the rule of third. And until the point that, you know, if the shots look good, the actions look good, then I snap a shot. Right? So I'm using rule of third. So I hope by now, you get a good understanding of the rule of third and capture it with this point of interest. So what I'll be a takeaway for today, only two points. One, if your shot is slanted, realign it with your horizontal line with this uh, built-in editing feature. First, you select your photo, you go to edit mode, you rotate it, align it until the lines is straightened up, then you set okay. Two, uh, every time, if possible, apply the rule of thirds, or we call it one third rule, and select the intersections. That is called point of interest. Okay, towards the end, I'd like to end up with this uh, a picture. I'm sure a lot of you still remember this very popular TV series called Have Gun Will Travel. I believe so. Do you believe so? <laughs> uh, but these days, this one was in the 60s. And today's 21st century, I would say a different theme. Have phone will travel. Because these days we can't live without a phone and we can't travel without a phone, right? <laughs> okay, so that's the end for my sessions. Thank you for your attention and perhaps we'll see you again. Thank you, Peter, for that wonderful sharing session. I'm sure everyone will now be more versed in the art of handphone photography. We would now like to move on to our next segment, which will be a horticultural sharing session conducted by Ms. Tam Xiang Yu. Xiang Yu is the founder of By Wind and Wave, which conducts nature-based programs such as gardening workshops and nature walks to help people help young and old explore and reconnect themselves with nature. She's currently working on her, obtaining her professional certification in horticultural therapy in the US. And today she will be sharing with us on select groups of houseplants that you can grow at home, as well as the benefits of gardening to one's health. Without further ado, Xiang Yu, please. Okay, so um, today I'm just going to give you a very short sharing about uh, gardening. So as you all know, because of COVID, a lot of us have been stuck at home for a very long time, or uh, maybe because of our health conditions, uh, we haven't been able to go out a lot. So uh, I think uh, this is a time where it's all the more important for us to uh, link, think about ways we can um, do more at home. All right, so gardening is one of the things you can do at home, even though you can't go out, uh, you can still do a little bit of gardening at home and you can still have uh, some form of activity or hobby indoors. Okay, so today I'm going to be sharing with you mainly three things. Um, number one, the benefits of having plants at home. Number two, some of the therapeutic benefits of gardening. So besides just having plants, uh, what is good about gardening, what is good about um, the act of 
you know, getting your hands dirty and doing a little bit of gardening. And then finally, I'm going to share with you some plants that you can grow at home. Okay, so uh, first thing. All right, now that we are home a lot, we are stuck at home for our own safety, of course. Uh, but besides that, when we are at home, um, we are surrounded by four walls. We don't get to see a lot of nature. Uh, we don't get to see a lot of people. So what you have at home is actually um, very stationary. It doesn't really change, right? You have your, uh, your bedroom, your kitchen, your living room, your dining room. Uh, what plants do is uh, having some plants at home, it helps to beautify your house, it beautifies the environment, uh, gives you a little bit of a splash of colours in your house. Okay, so you can have uh, most of the plants, they will be green in colour, but if you have some flowers, um, plants like your orchids, uh, spider lilies, roses, hibiscus, these flowers can also add a lot of colours to your house. And and when you get to see these um, plants in your environment, the different colors in your environment, uh, they actually help to stimulate your senses. Okay, and for some plants with some fragrance, um, if you have herbs like lemon balm, like mint, like lemongrass, okay, so these plants are all very fragrant. So when you smell them in the house, they also help to stimulate your senses. And at the same time, they help to reduce stress and anxiety helps you to uh, take your focus away from COVID. It helps you to take away your take your mind away from uh, other stresses in your life, like work or family. Uh, just uh, a part of nature comes into your house to help you to calm down a little bit. Okay, uh, some people also say that um, they believe that plants help to improve the quality of the air or that helps to remove toxins from, from your air. So uh, it is true. So there is a study done by NASA that proves that um, plants do help to remove toxins from the air, but in a very, very small amount. Okay, so the effect that one plant can do in, in removing toxins is actually very, very low or very insignificant. Uh, so if you really want to have plants to help uh, improve the quality of air or help to remove toxins, then you probably have to grow a lot of plants at home. Okay, so a bit like the first picture, you probably have to fill up your whole house with plants. Okay, <laughs> okay so besides just having plants in the house, like you can buy one pot of plant in the house and it can help to beautify the, the space. It can help you to uh, stimulate your senses. But beyond that, Okay, when we take part in the act of gardening, when we actually get our hands dirty, when we take care of our plants, such as uh, using, uh, when we prune our plants, when we water our plants, when we spend time even talking to our plants, uh, there are actually a lot of therapeutic benefits uh, in this activity. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, it helps to reduce stress because it takes your mind away from uh, the other problems in your life. It helps to uh, take your mind away from uh, conflicts or st other stresses that could be uh, um, making you anxiety anxious or depressed or stressed. Okay. Uh, at the same time, besides of uh, besides improving your mental well-being, it also helps to improve your physical health well-being. Okay. So when we are doing gardening, we use our hands a lot. Okay. Be it um, mixing or touching the soil, watering our plants, pruning our plants. Uh, all this involves quite a lot of uh, hand strength. Okay, you need to exercise your hands a lot. So this is one way to uh, really improve your fine motor skills, right? So uh, if you are thinking of ways to incorporate a bit of exercise or a bit of physical activity into your daily life, gardening is a very good way to do it. Uh, I've also seen uh, gardening to be a very good opportunity for people to uh, start conversations with people, right? When you have family members or friends around who are also interested in gardening, right? Sometimes we see even strangers who, who are fellow gardeners, right? When they see each other, 
uh, and they realize, oh, you like gardening too. Oh, me too. You know, I grew this plant. I grew this plant. Oh, how do you take care of this plant? So gardening immediately becomes a very easy uh, conversation topic for people. And even at home with your family and friends, even if they don't like gardening, um, plants are a very good way to introduce people to your hobby. Um, I have uh, worked with people who grow a lot of vegetables uh, or herbs for their family. So when you know they grow kangkong at home and they harvest the kangkong, they cook it for the family. Uh, this is something that gets the family talking also. So at the same time, while we are gardening, um, I think one of the, the very good outcome of gardening is it helps to build your self-esteem and your confidence also. Because um, for, for many people, especially when they get, uh, as they age, they feel that they have lost a bit of sense of purpose, or they feel like um, their day-to-day -day activities are quite meaningless they don't serve any purpose but when you start gardening you actually see uh, growth in something you find you find yourself taking care of a living thing and you get to experience uh, the plant growing uh, thriving and if you're growing edible plants you get to get actually get something to eat out of it or if you are growing flowers then at the end of your hard work you see wow your fruit of labor is the beautiful flowers. And so this helps to build your confidence and gives you meaning in life also. Okay, so now um, we've seen how gardening can be uh, an activity that is very fun. It's an activity that helps to relax us. If you three plants, okay, that are very easy to grow. Uh, so if you're thinking, Mm, you know, like gardening sounds quite okay. It sounds quite interesting. Maybe I want to give it a try. Okay, so the first plant that I want to share with you is a very, very common plant. Okay, and it's a very, very easy plant to grow. I think this is one of the easiest plants to grow. All right, this is the money plant. Uh, I know in Singapore, a lot of people like to grow this because they believe that, oh, it's a plant that will invite wealth into your family or into your home. Right, so if you want to get rich, if you want uh, wealth, okay, this is a plan to, to, to start growing because it's called the money plant. Uh, very easy plant to grow. It doesn't need a lot of sunlight. So you can see in the pictures, right? Um, you can even just grow a plant, put it on a bookshelf, on your table. Uh, you don't need a lot of sunlight. Or if you are very, very short of space, like if you look at the picture on the right, I can just grow... Uh, a small plant in a, in a glass bottle, okay, in water. So just remember to, to change the water maybe once every one or two days, okay, to, to uh, prevent any mosquitoes from breeding. All right, so this is the, the easiest, one of the easiest plants to grow. Okay, next I have the snake plant. And it's also called the mother-in-law's tongue, okay? So uh, the reason why it's called the mother-in-law's tongue is if you look at the picture on the right, the leaf is very long and sharp. <laughs> so some people say it's like the mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, the snake plant actually comes in a few different colors and shapes. So if you like some variety uh, in, in, your, in your plants or in your garden, you don't want all the plants to just be green. Uh, snake plant is quite a, a good plant to grow. Okay, so usually with snake plant, if you look at the one on the left, um, this smaller plant, it's green on the inside in the middle, and then on the, the fringe of it, it's like a yellow trimming. And then on the right, some of the uh, snake plants that you see, they would have something like stripes. Okay? And then some of the stripes might um, be yellow, some might be white. So there are many different types out there. Um, the snake plant is also quite easy to grow. You can grow it indoors or so. So you'll notice that the plants that I'm showing you, uh, they can all be grown inside your house. Uh, for the snake plant, it does need a little bit more sunlight. So if you have uh, maybe good morning light in the morning by your window, uh, that would be a good place to grow your snake plant. And uh, I like to recommend this to people because if you are someone who, like me, 
uh, tends to forget to water your plants. <laughs> The snake plant is quite forgiving. Okay, so I'll just quickly talk about the succulents again. Huh? So they are desert plants. Uh, they like to grow under hot sun and very well draining soil. So this is a plant that you can grow uh, close to the, the windows under hot, bright sunlight. And then in terms of watering also, they like water, but mm, not so much. So what you can do with succulents is usually I will only water them once a week. So if you are someone, again, if you, you forget to water your plants or if you are lazy to water plants, uh, succulent is also quite good because they are very drought tolerant. All right. So um, if you are not familiar with succulents, one good example is cactus. And cactus is also a type of succulent. So recently in Singapore, somebody grew a three-story tall cactus. Now, hmm. okay, my slide is not changing. Okay, yeah. All right, somebody grew a three story tall cactus in Singapore. So, if you live on the ground floor or if you have a garden at home, maybe you can do that. Uh, but if you don't, if you live in an, an apartment, then it's okay. We will not try a three story cactus. Okay, you can always go for these really small cacti or small succulents. Okay. And then one bonus, uh, because I, I heard that uh, our host here, Alastair, likes begonia. So begonia is also a very, very beautiful plant to grow. Um, if the first three types of plants are too easy for you, you think you want to go for something more challenging, begonia is very beautiful. Uh, if you look at the leaves, it actually has red undersides. So there are many different types of begonia. This is a begonia rex. Okay, So the underside of the leaf is red. Very, very beautiful. So then the interesting thing about nature is when you look at leaves that are not green, right? So if they're red or orange, these are plants that you know um, like to grow in shaded areas. So they don't need that much sunlight to produce uh, chlorophyll. Okay, so begonia is something that you can grow. So if you have partial sunlight, it still needs sun, but not strong sunlight. Okay, if it gets strong sunlight, then it starts to lose its color. And if you are interested in gardening, you don't know where to get your plants, uh, shop this. Okay, uh, in Singapore, there's actually so many places you can buy your plants from. Um, even if you go to Cheers, uh, supermarket, you will be able to find some plants there. Uh, if you want a larger variety, then you can always go down to the plant nurseries. So I've listed three here, the, the more well-known ones, but there are also a lot more. So World Farm, Candy Floriculture, and Ban Yi Chen. Okay. Um, another, another resource that I really like is fellow gardeners. So sometimes if you just walk down uh, uh, around your neighborhood, uh, if you go to the community garden, you might see other people who are gardening. If you talk to them, chances are a lot of them will be more than happy to share some of their plants with you. You can take a cutting or you can take some seeds. Uh, just don't steal them, okay? And uh, yeah, any of our public parks here also, uh, please don't pluck anything from the, the parks. If you need something, uh, always ask the gardener there. Okay, so that is all I have. Uh, thank you so much. And yeah, happy gardening. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Professor Kwai Hyung, our advisor to Mindset Center, to share on the therapeutic rainforest. Yeah, so Prof Kwa, please, the floor is yours. We did a study with Ann Parks, and we found that uh, people who do gardening, there's an improvement or enhancement of your immune system and uh, it been published in the big journal of the world and we were interviewed by the bbc that gardening improves your your uh, immune system it was last less likely to have at that time about done two years ago less likely to have common cold or flu you know so it's very good kind of ex uh, 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 therapeutic activity for people now um some of you i've read this book Nature, Health and Happiness, which I wrote with Professor um, uh, Vincent Chong and also um, Angela Sia from N Parks. And it, it tells us about what we do, uh, the Therapeutic Rainforest Program. And we want to uh, introduce this also to the people in, uh, who are ac actively involved in AWE. 
um, program. And I want to um, let you all know that the AWE program is not static in the way that we you do the same health education, uh, music, and then your uh, meridian flapping. It is always moving. You know, it's always new ideas, it's organic, and we, we we introduce activities which are based on our research. You know? So I know uh, uh, Gopal from Queenstown and also Pang and Lily were asking me about when can we start the uh, this therapeutic rainforest we'll we will first try to train some people and those who volunteer to 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 be trainers uh, will each be given a book so uh, it's quite expensive but if you are volunteer to, to to help out that's what we are going to uh, reward you with you know and what is so different about the therapeutic rainforest uh, compared to forest bathing or bathing in japan or american call it a uh, uh, forest therapy you know? we, we are doing something different you know because there are th there are three elements to it next slide uh alistair and it, it involves walking mindfully through the rainforest and then uh besides that you learn something about nature you know very often we walk through the rainforest or for that for that matter as you drive along the highway or the or around this your block of flats sometimes there are beautiful trees that you don't even know the name of the trees and so we're hoping to um encourage people to to learn more about the environment yeah so and at the end of the walk usually about an hour or one and a half hours we often have a coffee chat or you can just have a tea chat and it's there that we've been allow people to talk about matters health matters uh, um about controlling hypertension, diabetes, diet, you know. And that's where the lot of sharing will be going on. So these are the elements of the therapeutic rainforest. You know. I, I think the, uh, the American forest therapy, they, they don't talk about mindful walking. You just walk through the forest as you like. Uh, the Japanese do have a bit of mindful walking. Um, but what is unique here in our in this program is that we also encourage people to know more about the flora and fauna of, uh, of our parks here. As I'm talking to you now, I'm from my office here in NUH, I'm just looking across and it's on the right side is Kenridge Park. And it's really beautiful, you know. So although a lot of people lament that now the, in the midst of pandemic, they cannot fly to Hokkaido, they cannot fly to Switzerland. There's so much you can explore here in Singapore and it's so beautiful, you know. So, um, and the coffee chat also allow people to come together and able to build up a, a, a sense of togetherness, a bit of solidarity. And you find that this is very interesting. Um, next slide, please. All right. So when we talk about the ecology of resilience, I mentioned last, last week that um, for Singapore or for any country in the world to survive the pandemic it's not the resilience of one person it's not just yourself you know you, you just vaccinate yourself you see i'm okay but it's, it's also people around you uh, uh, your your neighbors your, your colleagues your friends you know and the environment that's going to, to help us to uh to uh, ride through the storm of the pandemic you know so this this program is also about physical health if you walk to the rainforest Mental health, we found that in our study, most of the people who walk through the rainforest begin to be able to sleep better. You know, one of the, one of the commonest symptoms of, uh, I mentioned last week on pandemic fatigue is insomnia. They cannot sleep. People worry so much, they cannot sleep. And many of the people who walk through this, uh, this program, you see them in a picture down there. You can see the person on the left, the second, the, the, the second to the left is up, you know, your good friend, the late Mr. Wee Sin To, you know, that was just taken, uh, I think, about a month or two before Mr. Wee passed away, you know, and uh, and so, so the physical health, the mental health, and you sleep better, and also very importantly, the social health. So we, we realized that when they walk together, the rainforest, they talk together at during coffee time. Um, you're supposed to walk mindfully, it means you walk quietly. You know? uh, we have Mrs. We sing to or Gyok Hua to uh, guide us, and, and and I think this program maybe we will have Mr. 
T.K. Han, I think he's in the audience here, uh, to help us to teach you people to walk mindfully and often to walk quietly, mindfully. And you, you can listen, can hear so much from the forest itself. We learn a lot about the, the sound of birds, the sound of insects, and, and it's very, very uh, stress relieving. You know, Realize that all of them also begin to know each other better. And many people in that group, I didn't, didn't know them, you know, begin to know each other. More importantly, there's a sense of compassion, a sense of empathy. They begin to take care of each other, you know. And during the pandemic now, uh, one of them will volunteer to buy the masks for their friends. Another will buy groceries for uh, the couple of widows and widowers in this group, and they will go, their friends will venture out to help them out. And and even those who are ill uh, and had to take need medicine from the hospital clinics then one of them will volunteer to take medicine for them. And so that's, that's very important for, for, the, for the community that there's a sense of uh, uh, compassion and care for one another. You know? And as I mentioned to you, when they were having a chat in the, in the, during, over coffee, and as I talked to them and, uh, and Mr. Wee Sinto would listen to them, and he told me one day that the people in a group have such interesting lives, you know, yeah. Although they are all, now of them, they are mostly middle class people. Uh, there are a couple of professors, there are the bankers, there are ministers, there are PERMSEC, but most of them come from very, very poor background and, they've, and they live their life, you know. Uh, their life, in a way, mirrors the rise of Singapore from third world to first. And, and, it, and it's, it's very inspiring. And so, Mr. Wee, before he, he passed on in, in, in February uh, last year, told me that I, I have to write a, a story of the lives of all these 20 people who uh, came to walk through the rainforest first. Yeah. So we came up with a book uh, called The Profiles in Resilience, the story of the lives of these people. And I'm also hoping that when we start this program, uh, the, the Therapy Rainforest for all of you in, in the, the various uh, community centers, and as far as Queenstown, you know, Changka, Aukang, Bishan, that you also begin to think about your own life, you know, then you you also have very interesting lives, and in, in, um, and you've done well in your in uh, in such of so much difficulties, and people, some live, even living abject poverty, and you have survived, and then so we are hoping may, maybe in sometimes in, in future years there'll be a special uh, profile in resilience award for for seniors who have done so well in their lives, you know, um, so. Um, and because they, they learned a lot about the forest, this group decided to donate to the end park you know, because uh, we learned about the, the, uh, the, the flowers and flora and fauna from a, a, a volunteer who came along. It was at the time was Max, Maxwell Ng and also Paul. And uh, the poor chat must get up early in the morning. So we decided since they help us so much, we also have such love and compassion for the people working there and also for the rainforest. And we donated some money to, the, to, to N Parks. And then N Parks, the chairman, Mr. Benny Lim, who last week won a, a, a big National Day Award, uh, told everybody that we, should, we can plant 30 medicinal trees at Hot Park. That's what we did. And so it's a sense of love for also the rainforest. And that's one of the, the objectives of this study, that people care for the rainforest. I mentioned this project in a World Congress just uh, uh, two months ago, and it inspired a lot of interest around the world. And uh, the, the chairman of the symposium was a chap from Brazil, and he told me that, wow, this is interesting. Uh, he said, do you know that the, the Brazilian rainforest or the Amazon rainforest is about 30,000 30, times the size of Singapore, and people are destroying it. And in fact, one third have been destroyed now. And that's one of the causes of global warming. So all of us here at Mind Science Center and here in Singapore are doing our part, you know, it's a very small part in uh, prevention of global warming by telling people that you have to treasure the rainforest. And that is the, the, the crux of this, of this uh, program. Is there one more last slide, uh, Alistair? That's the last one, is it? Okay, all right. So this is the last slide you see. We never actually own the rainforest. We merely look after it for the next generation. Something that, that uh, we think we should also share with the next generation of people. 
before I finish off, I want to tell you that we we're hoping to launch the EW program. Uh, Alistair is helping me out, and there was also uh, Mr. Rashid, and there are two other uh, Malay. Uh, colleagues, uh, Aisha and Abia, they're all watching today. Uh, and if you have friends either in uh, Mongol or in Yunos or anywhere you want to join in, uh, maybe you can let Alistair know it. This is for the Malay elderly that we, we often uh, miss out. And so we hope that um, uh, um, there will be a bigger program coming up, uh, not just on a webinar, but also we're using more of the handphone. So thank you very much. So yeah, before we end, uh, yeah, just to share like some new initiatives that we have. Uh, first, our module seven, the uh, AWE Learning module seven for teaching and facilitation, facilitation is now available, and this is for those who would like to uh, join as uh, AWE volunteers to be instructors. Uh, we also be conducting an audit on the current, the ones who have already uh, who are already qualified as uh, instructors but have one, have not taken module seven. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, we also have the AWE e-learning in Mandarin, uh, fully translated for all seven modules that yeah, we mentioned earlier. So uh, the, the link to the Mandarin courses can be found in the chat. I think May has shared. Yeah, so you can look through there. Uh, Pete, uh, Peter's handphone photography workshop uh, is due to be held on the 27th of August. And this is currently a pilot for our volunteer leaders, uh, the leaders at our volunteer center, our centers. So uh, we look to expand this to uh, cater to all the seniors at our AWE centers in the future, provided co uh, co restrictions allow. Uh, next is our therapeutic rainforest program. Uh, we'll be starting in uh, the volunteer training in November, at Prof. Kwa has mentioned. So, yes, uh, you can look forward to this uh, in the coming months. And finally, the AWE Train the Trainer workshop. Uh, this the, For those current, uh, current instructors who would like to take the chance to be an AWE trainer. Uh, this workshop will be for you and it will be due to be held in November as well. Okay. So, uh, for it, and also we we'll appreciate your feedback. Uh, you can scan the QR code here. So, yeah, just use your phone. I'll give you like a short while to scan the code first. Or you can even use the URL. Thank you for attending this uh, uh, short AW webinar. Uh, I, I know that we are all exiting yeah. from the alert now. So, it's very good to look forward to. Right. So, thank you everybody for attending. Thank and uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.